Casino employees of Reddit. What is the worst you have ever seen someone handle a loss? I was security to Casino for a few years. Saddest story for me was this older gentleman, let's call him Tom for privacy's sake. Now Tom would frequent the casino every day, spending anywhere from $200 to $300. I had struck up a lot of conversations with him because he was a regular, and he was a genuinely kind person who I enjoyed seeing. One day Tom comes in and I can tell he was upset. I don't make anything of it, but after seeing the guy for a few years almost every day, that day he looked really off. So a couple hours go by and I track him down and ask, how's the day going? Any big wins? Just a general chit chat. He starts sobbing, tears running down his face. His wife had passed away from sudden cardiac death, is what I believe he called it at least. He was devastated. We talked for quite a while. I tried comforting him while he played the machines and I noticed he was betting extremely large. 200 to 300 dollars per spin on the machine. I knew that was a lot for him, but I didn't say anything because it's not my business. And I was sure it's a coping mechanism for him at the moment, doing something he loved when he just lost the love of his life. Hours later, I see him heading out the door and I run up to him. I catch him and wish him all the best and that I'll see him soon. He smiled, said thanks for the chat and thank you for the condolences, and left. He booked a room in our hotel and unalived himself that night. A little while later, I find out through some of our other staff who were sort of friends of his family that he had spent all of his money, every dime that evening, spinning high limit on the machines. I'm assuming because he wanted a little enjoyment before he took his life. Still makes me upset I didn't invite him over or do anything else because I knew he was in pain. OP, I gotta say, this one's not on you. It's impossible to know what will help in these situations and you just gotta do the best you can. And you never really know where someone's head is at, so it's not your fault at all. The situation, though, is just terrible. Story 2 was a waitress in casino establishment for 10 years. People taking their own lives did happen, but it wasn't common. Saddest was an Asian woman who hung herself in the toilets. She lost 20k or so from memory and was not a high roller type. Three to four days later, her car was to be towed from the underground car park. Sadly, she left her two fluffy dogs in there and nobody knew. Poor things were dead. The establishment then put on parking patrol officers who check cars every few hours. They would find alive dogs and kids in there far too often. I quit after six months as I was tired of watching miserable zombies. I don't think I could ever work in a casino. I think I would be way too depressed watching people be depressed and gamble. The environment just seems like hell to me. Story 3. I actually did work in a casino in Las Vegas a few years back in VIP services. One of our high rollers who visited frequently had a very bad gambling problem that his wife was divorcing him over. He lost everything at the tables and couldn't even afford his plane ticket back home. He threatened to go to the roof of the building and throw himself off. The casino felt so sorry for him we ended up buying a ticket back home for him. Never heard from him again after that. Story 4. Former table dealer here. I've had drunk guys tell me I'm the worst dealer ever, I suck, whatever. I would just reply, have a nice day. The other people at the table were generally all on my side. I've had high rollers slam the table with their fist or not react at all to losing thousands. The worst and the saddest one that sticks out in my mind though is a guy who was around $2,000 down on blackjack. He was nice and he was tipping pretty well. I was rooting for him as I tended to do. I knocked his tens for good luck. Then he lost a big one and just yelled, frick, so loud that the entire casino must have heard it. It was the kind of desperation in his voice and everything about him that told me he could not afford to lose as much as he just lost. He went to the ATM and I rotated to another table. It was stuff like that, the frickin' smoke in my face, sleep deprivation from the late nights that led me to get out of there. A lot of other unpleasant moments too, but they all blur together. Money was nice, but it wasn't for me. Story 5. Not a casino employee, but just the other day my father-in-law, security, watched an elderly lady lose everything at a poker table, then go around and steal a couple people's purses slash wallets. When they confronted her and asked for ID, she wouldn't give it to them because they weren't the police. When the police arrived, she still wouldn't give them her ID or even her name, saying they couldn't arrest her if they didn't know who she was. Needless to say, they arrested her. The last thing the cop asked her was, are you at least going to cooperate and walk out with us to the car, or are you going to do it the hard way? They had to carry her out and she was kicking the windows in the back of the car the entire time. Addiction can really make grown people do some crazy things, huh? A full-on tantrum as an elderly woman. That's... Yikes. Story 6. I sat next to a guy. He drove a Pepsi truck. He said his mom died and left him $30,000. He'd never seen this much money before, so he thought he could turn it into $100,000. We're at the blackjack table. He's getting wasted and crying inconsistently because of his mom, talking about her dying. The cocktail waitresses are teasing him the whole night and he tips them $25 every drink. In two hours, he loses everything. He has this look of nervousness on his face and said his wife is going to end him if she finds out about this, because they have four kids and want 
wanted to buy a house. He walked out, and ten minutes later I go to my car and see that he got a DUI. In 24 hours, his mom died, he gets a ton of money, loses it all, will probably get divorced, gets a DUI, and is sitting in the back of a cop car with blue balls from the cocktail waitresses. A lot of people just don't know how to deal with windfalls, huh? 30000 all at once is a lot of money, and if he's never used to that kind of money, I can see why this didn't seem like that bad of an idea to him. But really, whew. You get that much money, you need a very clear plan what to do with it, or it will probably be wasted. Admittedly, probably not as bad as this guy, but it probably will be wasted. Story 7. Dealer for 10 years. Third day dealing. Fresh out of dealer school, I'm dealing Pai Gao tiles. Asian domino game. Try to pair up the tiles and add as close to 9 as possible. On a $25 minimum game. Guy bets 25 to 75 for a good 2 hours. He then slides his whole stack on one hand for 3k. For those who know the game, he gets Tin Dai Bo. I pulled Jijun. For those who don't know the game, it's like he got pocket kings, and I got pocket aces. Or he pulled a 20 in blackjack, and I pulled 11 cards to make 21. The odds are astronomical. It's the only hand that beats him. He slams his fist on the table, swearing in Chinese. Chips fly everywhere, and he begins to shove fingers down his throat and self-induces vomit all over my game. Close the table and pit down for cleanup. Third day dealing. Money and benefits are great, though. Highly recommend the industry. Made 30 to 40 an hour. Story 8. Obligatory not a casino employee, but... When I was in Vegas, I was watching a very intense game of blackjack on Fremont Street. The guy bet everything he had, convinced, since he was on a winning streak, this would be the hand that doubled his winnings. Unsurprisingly, he busts. As soon as they swooped his chips away, he began slamming his hands on the table, screaming, What the hell? What the hell? With his girlfriend, dressed in a cheesy, tight mini dress and seven-inch heels, screaming at him and telling him that he promised her a Birkin purse with that money and crying. An unsuspecting guy accidentally bumped into this irate dude, and that just made him lose his mind. A chair went flying. The dude he bumped into stepped up and starts asking him if he wants a piece of this. Shoves are exchanged, and the screaming starts just as a high heel is thrown straight past the sore loser's face and right into someone else's head. I wanted to stay and watch the throwdown, but my boyfriend yanked me away with a solid nope. Just as well. Two furious-looking Vegas PD officers were literally shoving their way through the crowd as we stepped away. Story 9. Not an employee, but the first time I was ever in a casino, I was skulking around the blackjack tables. I was baffled by the minimums. 500, 1,000, 5,000 dollars a hand? Edit. Someone has pointed out that I may have been looking at the maximums, it's hard to remember, but I thought it was nuts. This was a busy day and all of them were full. I sat behind the $5,000 table. I watched a guy lose hand after hand after hand. I always figured that when someone bets at these tables, they have so much money that they can afford to throw it away like it was nothing. Not this guy. I don't know if this guy just wanted to be a high roller for the day or what, but he was visibly upset and very quickly bleeding into audibly upset. He lost his last hand and just frickin' lost it. Then he proceeded to rant and rave until the pit boss came over and offered him something or other. He continued to be a giant jerk, so three security guards came over and escorted him to the buffet. I like to imagine he tried to get his tens of thousands of dollars back in crab legs. Yeah, I don't think a blackjack table was 5,000 minimum. OP definitely has something mixed up, but still. The guy was probably betting a lot of money that he clearly could not afford to lose. That's the way it goes, too, though. You make losses at smaller tables, then you move up to try and win it back. And guess what? That's never the play. Story 10. I used to be a casino host on cruise ship casinos. Seen many people lose their crap, but there is one woman I'll never forget. She was gambling a lot. Towards the end of the cruise, I would find her on the slots she was crying at and playing. I asked her, what's wrong? She said that she couldn't afford to play anymore, and it's all on her credit card. Talking, playing, and crying at the same time. I banned her from the casino, but it was already too late. I also heard stories from colleagues that used to work for an Asian cruise company that they would always keep one lifeboat half lowered because Chinese people would jump overboard after losing all their money. Gambling on a slot machine on a credit card... That's just not where anyone wants to be in life, I don't think. I hope that woman got help for her problem, because that is very clearly a problem. Story 11. Ex-casino worker here. I have a couple of stories. We spend one hour and 20 minutes on the table before break. 1. A guy went to the ATM about three to four times and came back with roughly 200 each time. Each time he got more and more nervous. The last time he came to the table, he said, This is the last of my cash, hey? This is my rent money. He got down to his last $50 and turned that into like 800 He was the only one at the table, and I said, Hey, I shouldn't say this, but you should go home. You've done well, and you should cash that in and head home. He said, Thanks, I really appreciate it, and left. He came back after 10 minutes and lost it all. He finished off with him taking off his shoes and putting them on the table and saying, You've taken everything, you might as well take my shoes too. 
Two, I was dealing and this guy came up to my table and cashed in a thousand bucks each time. He cashed in a total of four thousand. He could be the most aggressive guy I had ever met. He flashed his black card and proceeded to tell me how important he was. He got really aggressive by the two thousand to three thousand mark and started berating me each time he lost. After a while I said, I don't care who you are, you have to treat me with some form of respect. He was putting so much money over, the pit bosses did nothing, and he settled a bit after I said that. When I left the table, a young woman replaced me, and I heard he started to do the same thing that he did to me, and she froze mid-hand. She couldn't move as he was yelling at her so much and she freaked. The pit boss came up to try and defuse the situation and he hit him. I heard he got a five-year ban. Yikes, a gambler with a god complex. That is not a good combo. If someone is going to be a big gambler, I would hope they would at least be respectful. And that first story is really sad. OP tried. Really, OP is super not supposed to say that ever. That is a one-way ticket to getting fired. But he just wanted to help out this poor guy who obviously had poor self-control and it wasn't enough. Sometimes you can't save people from themselves. Story 13. I was dealing high limit one night and a man lost his last two $500 chips for a total loss of 30000 in about 20 minutes. I know this guy and have dealt to him for many years, so I wasn't totally surprised by this response. He proceeds to stand up, tuck his chair in nice and neatly, and then squares up to me from behind his chair and rips off his own shirt. He was wearing a $400 Robert Graham. Buttons go flying in about four different directions and he lets out a primal scream. The two other players were so scared by his delayed reaction that they ducked for cover out of sheer surprise. I'm left staring at him with my mouth to the floor. He's heavily breathing and bare-chested to his belly button and staring at me. I was left speechless as he turned and walked out of the casino to his villa to no doubt break something else. Absolute meltdown. Story 14. Had a roulette spinner tell me that one time a woman came in and gave the woman a check to cash out and announced, All right, time for me to win my rent money for the month. The dealer handed her the check back and said, Ma'am, we're not accepting your money at this hotel. Take this check and go pay part of your rent with it and work to pay the rest. This is supposed to be a place of fun, not where you risk your life. Story 15. Forget casinos, I worked at a hole-in-the-wall liquor store. Well, it was more like a scratch-off lottery store that sold liquor. Can't tell you how many times people would spend all their rent money, car payment, and grocery money on scratch-offs. They'd come back in with their kids, crying, begging me for their money back, after spending like $1,000 every day for a week. Lady, I just work here. Sorry. Story 16. Friend used to work at a casino in Las Vegas. He said one day a woman came in and gambled away about $30,000, which was her family's life savings, all their money, and also her son's college fund. A few hours later, my friend goes on his break and stumbles upon the lady and her son around 17, 18 in the parking lot. The kid is absolutely livid. He's screaming at her, calling her every name in the book, yelling that she ruined his life and now he can't go to college because of her. She's dead to him, etc. During all this, his mother is bawling like a baby and pleading with him to stop yelling at her and saying she's sorry. My friend had to call security when the kid started to physically assault her, punching her, slapping her, pulling her hair, etc. When they arrived, though, they saw him drive out of the parking lot and nearly, possibly deliberately, run over his mother, as she, blood gushing out of her nose, was lying on the ground and shrieking for him to stop. Very disheartening, my friend said. Disheartening is a very light word for this situation. This is tragic. What an insanely messed up family dynamic, I want to say. But clearly things were not going well for anyone in that family. I feel like there were a lot of issues there that needed to be sorted out that weren't. And for that, I actually feel a lot of sympathy for them. My heart goes out to them. Story 17. I was playing poker at a casino years ago. Was playing five slash ten dollar no limit hold'em. Over the course of two hours, I took three huge pots off the same guy. Each time it was a case of me outbetting him. He folds and I muck the winning hand. That means I opted not to show the cards, because when the other players fold, you don't have to. On the third big pot I took from him, I showed him my cards for fun. I turned over a garbage hand. He claimed he folded a straight. He got extremely mad and jumped to his feet, started walking around screaming at the top of his lungs. The next time I have a good hand, you better call my raise and you better frickin' pump it! Security came over and calmed him down, and he agreed to chill out. What happened next was caused by me deliberately. I wanted to poke the bear and see this guy really lose his cool. He calls one of my bets, and the hand involved just the two of us and one other guy. On the river card, the angry guy folds his hand. After me and the other guy bet and raise two or three times. The other guy folds his hand and I show another crappy hand to the table. I think it was a missed flush draw. The angry gentleman jumped over the table and tried to hit me. Security was still close by and dragged him out of the poker room. He threw a few punches and we saw them through the doorway. They had him pinned down to the floor with their knees on his neck for 20 minutes while waiting for the police. He was fuming for the first few minutes. And after that he was trying to apologize and begging them not to get the police involved. 
I gotta say, if you cannot keep your cool, poker might not be the game for you, man. Let alone the fact that you're more likely to lose money just because of how casinos work. Just that keeping your emotional cool is really important in poker. Hard to bluff when you're frickin' furious. Story 18. Not a casino worker, but when I was at university, I used to deal poker at various reputable bars and establishments around my city and neighboring towns. One night, I was dealing at a bar in town that was about a one and a half hour drive from my home. I used to drive a very recognizable vehicle and a lot of the regular players knew it, because they would see me pull into the car park when I arrived to deal. At about 1am I had a regular player evicted because he was drunk and being abusive. After I packed up and went to my vehicle at about 3am, I discovered all of my tires had been slashed. My roadside assistance wouldn't help because I was too far away. I had to leave my vehicle and take $250 taxi rides and spend $800 on new tires. As a student, this hurt a lot and precipitated me to leaving the industry. Story 19. Not a casino employee, but worked at a kiosk for a very brief time when I was younger. Back then, we had some slot machines. Illegal now to some extent. Current slot machines have tiny, tiny spin bets like a few cents per spin. I'd say that on any given day, we would have around four to five regulars that would just hang around all day and throw away their money on the machines. These people were 100% addicts. Max bets on such machines were like $5 a spin, which really adds up when you're hanging around the machines 6 to 7 hours a day. After some of them had gambled away, say, $1,000, they would start to do weird stuff like writing false out-of-service signs and hang or tape them on the machine, while they sprinted or drove home or to the bank to get more money. Their rationale was that if they had fed the machines that much, it would spit out again very soon, and they obviously didn't want any others to win their lost money. One day, let's call her Jane, was playing the machines. She came in with a stack of cash, probably 5 or 10 10,000. She played away 90% of it, then tried another machine and lost it all. She started screaming, kicking the machines, completely lost it. Turns out she'd been stealing money from her employer and was taking out more and more, hoping to get it all back. I'm not sure why they don't understand that slot machines are a guaranteed loss over time. It's only beneficial if slash when you put on some money and by chance win the right time. If you keep putting your money on the machines, you'll lose every time. Story 20. I've had a few patrons lose a ton and never come back, only to find out later they drove their car into a tree or put a shotgun in their mouth. I do have a good story about the worst I saw someone handle a win, though. This older gentleman was a regular and a total jerk. Never tipped, never smiled or said hello, and was always in a foul mood. I was watching him play a 50 cent machine one night when he hit three jackpot symbols and won five grand. I went up to him and congratulated him, and I will never forget the bemused look on his face. When the machine hits a single payout of over 1200, the machine locks up and won't spin again until an attendant resets it. He just kept hitting the button in vain trying to play like a child whose toy stopped working. When I told him that the machine wasn't going to spin until we paid him his hand pay, his only words were, Can I play with this one? and motioned to the machine next to his. I told him that he could, and he moved over and went straight back to his zombie-like trance. When we brought his jackpot winnings to him, he huffed and puffed because we asked him to stop playing for mint while we counted out his $5,000. It's like the money didn't even matter. Working at a casino can be a lot of fun, but the worst thing about it is the fact that you know you're a drug dealer, and your whole job is to make people keep taking your product. And that's all the stories for today, and a good one to end it on, I think. OP kind of summed up entirely why I could never work at a casino, as I mentioned before. You are absolutely just a drug dealer, and something about that just doesn't sit right with me, man. Someone winning $5,000 and not even moving a muscle and just wanting to gamble more? I don't know how you could watch that and want to keep doing it. Anyway, remember everybody, don't gamble what you can't afford to lose. And if it's not fun, stop. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one.